Those will keep you busy for a day or two. Yes? Okay. And I have a message. We are continuing in the Yeshua Teaches Torah message series. This is part four. And it's entitled, If Anyone Wishes to Come After Me. So that might lead you to where we'd be reading from. Yahweh, open our eyes that we might see wonders from your word. Now, as some of you already know, a word from Yahweh came to me on the 26th of December at 1 o'clock in the morning. And that word was Emmanuel, which means El is with us. What would El, what would God do if he was here with us? And it's what I received is that he would teach us Torah. And we see this, Yahweh sent Yeshua, Jesus, to be El with us, Emmanuel, so that Yeshua could teach us Yahweh's ways, his Torah. And we see that in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, Yahweh himself will give you a sign. Look, the virgin conceives and gives birth to a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And in John 1.14, it tells us, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Picking up where we left off last week, Yeshua and his disciples are still up at Caesarea Philippi, and he's closing that teaching that's taking place there. So we're going to talk, we're going to be dealing with Matthew 16, verses 24 through 28. The few of the things that he says then. Verse 24, it says, Then Yeshua says to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his stake and follow me. That's according to the scriptures. If anyone wishes to come after me, Yeshua uses the word lecha akare, which means walk after me or follow me in English. That's how it's going to get translated. The phrase to follow me is not just, you know, like walking behind him like he's going along and you're kind of walking behind him and you're just sort of going along the way he's going. No. Nope. It means to dedicate your whole life to be just like him. When he says, follow me, he really means it. It is the kind of phrase that the teachers of Yeshua's day says to their student, to be like him. Now, it's a culture thing from way back long, long ago. In our Western culture, students just learn from the teacher what the teacher teaches. The student doesn't change their life to be like the teacher. You know, I, had a, I had a great math professor. He is real good. Boy, he, he really was good. And I liked him a lot. But I'm not going to follow him. I'm not going to do the same things he does. Not at all. You know, except for math stuff, yeah. The teacher teaches. I teach, but I don't expect any of you to be like me. You wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> you wouldn't want to spend one single day in my head. <laughs> All right, straighten up. In the culture of the late Second Temple times, the student became just like the teacher. Now, Paul says that he sat at the feet of this guy named Gamaliel. Now that means he became just like his teacher, Gamaliel. Not, I mean, he really did the same stuff. And his early, the early things that he was doing shows it. The student's desire is what, and what the student strives for is to be just exactly like the teacher. 
culturally in that day. <clears throat> Today's church has, we just, we take the statement, follow me lightly, because it's not in our culture to follow him like, to be like him. It's just, it's not there. When he says, follow me, you, we just don't get it. It's not our fault, it's our culture. It's the way we live. Yeshua continues, and he says to the student to deny himself. Some other versions say, let him despise himself, or let him scorn himself. The one I like the best is give up your own way. You want to follow him? Give up your own thing. Don't be your own thing. It's kind of like saying we're not to be lovers of ourselves. Have you ever heard that phrase? And then Yeshua adds, take up his stake, and a stake is used in the, in the scriptures. King James says take up his cross. And I probably have never heard a teaching on this. But it should give us an idea that we are to put to death anything that would get in the way of following Yeshua. This is serious stuff. That one single verse is way more serious than the typical ordinary Christian person is going to handle. It's hard for me to even get a grasp of put to death me? We're to do just that. We have to put to death anything that gets in the way of following Yeshua, such as... Now these are things that I have actually heard people say. So these should, are in quotes for a reason. I won't give up my bacon. I don't care what your law says. I'm not giving it up. I want it. Nah. I won't give up my church. All my friends are there. I'm not going to leave that. I won't be able to face my family. What would my family think if I started doing all that Jewish stuff? But here's the big one. This is the big deal. This is the thing we have to give up. Pride. That's what started all the other ones. I'm not going to whatever. That's a prideful statement. Yeshua says, I want you to set your, side of pro your, your pride aside because I don't want anything to do with it. It's in my way, he says. You cannot give up your cross, you cannot take up your cross and deny yourself with pride. Pride's got to die. And about most of us just ain't ready to do that. The hardest thing to do. And we don't even know what we're talking about most of the time. Well, I'm not a prideful person. You just proved you are. <laughs> I am so humble, I'm the most humble person you've ever met. Okay, the whole thing, and this carries on from, from it, it carries on from discussions that he had before this time when they're in Caesarea Philippi, like, like around Matthew 13, where he does a bunch of parables, he's describing the kingdom, and he's going to continue later... <coughs> in discussions of the kingdom, he's talking about kingdom principles. <laughs> Pride can't keep you or get you in the kingdom. Do you understand that? Kingdom principles. The kingdom of heaven is a now thing because of Yeshua. When he came, he brought it with him. It is here under his authority. It is not something way off in the sweet by and by. 
when you die, you're going to go to the heavenly shores and all that. That's not it. Kingdom is now. Yeshua brings to earth the kingdom of the heavens. I've already given six or seven messages in a series called the kingdom of the heavens. You go back and look at those because I discuss how it is the kingdom is here and how he brought it. Yeshua is the kingdom. And since his appearance here on earth, we are in it now. Now when he comes back, there will be exactly no doubt that the kingdom is here. And there's going to be a whole lot of, what, what used the word ganashing of teeth earlier today? Somebody said that? Weeping and gnashing of teeth? There's going to be an awful lot of that going on when he returns. But he, he, when he came here, he told us all kinds of stuff. We're supposed to be living that. And he didn't really, he wasn't vague at all. Yeshua continues, For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it. We are to give up the earthly, fleshly, lifey thing that we have and be focusing on him because he says, Whoever loses his life for my sake shall find it. We are to take up our place in the kingdom of the heavens in Yeshua. This isn't martyrdom, okay? This isn't getting killed by, by a bunch of, of wild Indians or, or African tribesmen or something. It's nothing, got nothing to do with that. It is to set aside our, our prideful being in order to follow him. This is not a thing you're going to do like, like one afternoon you're going to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to set aside my pride, and you spend the rest of the afternoon working on it, and then you set it aside. You, that's it. This is an ongoing struggle, and I really do mean the word struggle. You're going to be struggling with this for a long time. You're going to be struggling with it week in and week out, month in and month out, year in and year out. But that's good. We're allowed to work our way. We're allowed to work on our own salvation. You're allowed to do that. You can work on your prideful self. You're going to get reminded of stuff. And I'm not saying what your, your wife or your husband or somebody says to you, hey, that's really being prideful, you know. No. Yahweh is going to poke you a little bit once in a while telling you, ah, that was uh, one of your pride things there. And you mark that down in your little notebook and don't do that no more. Like my brother used to say, stop that! In everything, in everything that we do, we are to do it as he would do it. Here's some things about Yeshua. This is real. This is real life. He spent 30 years as an ordinary Jewish man in ordinary Jewish society. He lived up around the Galilee area. He had a job, a J-O-B. He worked with other people, he, all that kind of stuff. He was not a rich person or some, something else down in Jerusalem or up in Jerusalem. You know, he didn't live in big fancy houses and all of that kind of, didn't go to the best colleges and so forth. He worked. He had friends and neighbors, just like you do. He lived in a normal Jewish family. He had brothers and sisters, we're told. Mom and dad. And they told him what to do. He probably had a favorite food. You know, and things, he might have even had a pet. He doesn't, none of, the, none of this stuff is described in the scriptures, but he was an ordinary guy. He was not some ethereal being floating above all the rest of us. Some of these Jesus movies, I can't watch them. I, there's one, I, I, don't, I won't, I don't. He, the guy has like this swimmy appearance, like he's above everybody around him, that he's pretending to be Jesus. And of course, he's got blue eyes and kind of light brown hair and, and stuff like that. White skin, don't forget. And whatever that is on his face certainly isn't a beard. Anyhow, he was not that. 
He was just a guy. He was just like us. Completely, absolutely just like us. And he did things that normal human beings do all the time. Everything. So he really knew how we do things, and he knew what the human condition was. He probably could say to someone, okay, I know getting rid of your pride is really tough. I understand that. And he can understand it because he's like us. In following Yeshua, he expects us to live in our normal society and conduct our day-to-day -day affairs the same way he did. You have jobs. You drive cars in traffic with everybody else. You have, most of us nowadays have these computer things that don't always work right. He understands frustrations, just like us. And he expects us to have those things happen to us. He expects us to, to live. We're not suddenly cut off from everything because now we're holier than everything around us. He could have done that. As soon as you accept Jesus, bam, you are off in some never-never land and nothing will ever bother you again. Why didn't he do that? Really glad he didn't. He expects you to follow or expects us to follow Yahweh's instructions in the Torah because that's the way of life of the true believer. You're not supposed to sin. It's what he wants you to do, is not sin. What is sin? It's in the Torah. That's it. So if we know what those things are and we try to live that lifestyle, you're living a sinless lifestyle. Now, if you never sin from the moment you're saved, hey, I've heard this. I have not sinned for over 40 years. Whoa, man. He expects things, he, he expects reality. If you are under the impression that somehow because Yeshua, who is your teacher, lived this Torah obedient and perfect lifestyle so that you don't have to do it, you're fooling yourself. That's right. But this is taught. Don't follow that teaching. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to use the, I'm going to use the L word. That's a lie. Don't do that. He expects you to follow the rules. Because he did. And if he can, we can. Continuing in verse 26, for what, it, for what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses his own life? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his life? Pursue Yeshua. Pursue Yeshua's lifestyle. Pursue the things that he wants. And it is life. He kind of said that, which I'm going to cover in other messages. Yeshua is saying that following him is life. Yes, it's so. Then he tells us some end time stuff. For the son of Adam, that's him, is going to come in the glory of his father with his messengers, that'd be angels, and then he shall reward each according to his works. If you think that getting saved, you don't have to do works, do you know that getting saved is a work? You think about it. But what works is he talking about here? In context... He's speaking about those things that we do as we follow him. And because Yeshua taught us Torah, those works are Torah works. They're works of the law, the written law. Understand, 
Not the oral thing where you've got to do all kinds of extra stuff. That's not what he's talking about. In Matthew 16, 28, he says, Truly I say to you, there are some standing here who shall not taste death at all until they see the Son of Adam coming in his glory. There were some that were right there that were going to see him resurrected. Okay, they would be seeing that. If you want to follow Jesus, and I think there's a song about that. Now this is true. If you want to follow Jesus, then you must follow Yeshua. You must do what he does. You must deny yourself, because he said so. You must deny your pride. And stop following blind traditions. Tradition is peer pressure from dead people. <laughs> you think about it. Your great-great-grandfather and grandmother set up how you do Christmas. Your grandfather and grandmother did Christmas that way. Your father and mother did Christmas that way, and that's why you're doing it that way. Why did my mom cut the ham in half when she put it in the cooker? Because her mother did it, so it would fit in the cooker. It's just tradition. Do you know that you don't have to do what everybody else wants you to do? Do you know that? If your family demands that you show up at Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, you don't have to do that. And do you think that at the judgment you're going to get graded on how well you followed the crowd? If the crowd jumped off a cliff, would you follow them? Now, every one of you should be thinking, that's what my mom used to say to me all the time. If everybody jumped off a cliff, would you go with them? Ma, <laughs> you don't have to do what they're doing. You can establish your very own traditions. Now, over the next several weeks, I want to talk to you about you setting up a special tradition of your own, in your own family or in your own self, called the Sabbath. Show them, y'all. Hey.